of them goes, no, that's gay. <laughs> you charge for a sexual favor versus what's the lowest you would actually know? Buttermelon sugar. Hi. Buttermelon <laughs> sugar. Hi. <laughs> it's so normal. <laughs> <laughs> everybody to the since 96 podcast i'm sam alex tyson you let's go got a good one for you today we're gonna get into our tips talk about some listener questions because we have so many of those and then jump into some deep dives but first we're gonna talk about since we spoke how was you guys this week chilling had some family in town Got to be the typical tour guides and chauffeurs. Dude, I think we all had family in town, right? We did. Again. <laughs> yeah. Again. Again for Tyson. <laughs> yeah. Wait, didn't you guys have family in town last week too? Uh, uh, I guess last week. It was yeah. just the same people though. Bled over a little bit. Yeah. yeah. yeah you had two different people come through. Mm-hmm. You had two different people come through. Yeah. yeah. I just had the same. People that stayed for a while. The first week, though, my family was staying downstairs. This week, they're staying with us. Whole different ball game. <laughs> it's been rough. How many square feet is your apartment? Uh, it's got to be less than like seven hundred. To be honest, oh boy. Yeah. It did. It's hard to have your own space. Uh, ours was super nice because we have an Airbnb underneath us, and so Jess's parents just stayed down there, and so it was great. We had our own space. They had theirs. We all, everyone had their own bathrooms, their own kitchens. One bathroom. F that. One bathroom <laughs> that has a lot of plumbing problems, dude. You guys only have one bathroom? Yeah. Three bedrooms, one bath? That's mm-hmm. rough, dude. I know. It's really unfortunate. But. We can cut this out because I'm sure my in-laws are going to listen to this. Mm. But since we spoke, It's been really rough. I mean, <laughs> I'm just going to be blatant and honest. And yeah, we should probably cut this out. More of a vent session than anything. <laughs> All right, and- yeah. I mean, it's, it's not their fault, too. Like, my father in law has some medical issues. All I have to say is like two days worth of diarrhea with one bathroom. <laughs> we got to keep this in, man. <laughs> <laughs> this be- no. No, yeah, that's- no, we'll cut it. Yeah, we'll cut it. All right. But yeah. And, that'll set the vibe and <laughs> cut <laughs> um, but yeah no it's it's fun having people in town it just throws off your schedule super hard which totally. kills me i'm like for sure i'm like all of a sudden you're on vacation uh diet which is just carbs and sugar you're on vacation budget which is just like bleeding me dry <laughs> of all the money i have and like no working out not working not working yeah yeah that's hard work schedule is through the because everyone wants floor. to do stuff right when you guys are in your key hours right yes yeah. everyone always wants to do stuff and the thing that kills me is that like even though you're taking off work to like go to the beach most of the time at least in my situation i'm not actually doing the things that i would want to do if i was taking the day off yeah you know yeah you're like just going down to hooky lao and like sitting on the sand you're doing the touristy beach stuff isn't as fun you don't want to go out and surf because then you're just leaving your friends they probably don't know how to surf so, yeah you know and then you're just yeah dude we ran into landon um bold at in haliva mm. <laughs> just walking down the street and then we see him walking with a group and he's like hey what's up playing tourist <laughs> i was like yep <laughs> <laughs> he knows it all too well he does man. yeah he's just, the kind of guy to just call it out so yeah in front of your family (laughs) yeah it's true though man you just when do you ever do those touristy things it's just when people are here and yeah my family jumped the bridge in haliva no way my mom did there's like all these you know how there's always local kids sitting on the bridge yeah totally yeah they were cheering on my mom that's awesome she's funny that's that's way better than (laughs) yeah what i was doing speaking of those local kids i was walking by them when we were out there (laughs) There was probably seven of them, and they're all like jumping off and everything. Walk past, I'm like, do a flip. And then they all start chattering, and one of them goes, no, that's gay. <laughs> what? No. I was like, what? <laughs> so random. Just, he said that to you? Yeah. Just 
I was just walking trying past. to justify oh, why he you were can't saying do, do a flip. Yeah, I was and like, he was like, nah, that's the, oh. Yeah, I was just walking past it. Hey, do a flip. No, that's gay. <laughs> <laughs> just because he can't do a flip, he's trying to justify it so hard. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, for queers. I can, but yeah. <laughs> I can, but I won't. Yeah, exactly. It's all about the suicide dive. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which is just the dumbest thing and the easiest thing to ever do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bunch of little punks, dude. But yeah, playing tourist, I'm glad it's over. <laughs> it's fun having a family, family in town. Yeah, everyone's gone for us. My family's still here till next Tuesday. Ooh. Ooh. Like this coming Tuesday? Or man. This coming Tuesday. Okay. That's a minute. But yeah, that's a long time. To have well, it is a long time. Yeah. Family. I know. I try to tell myself, like, okay, it's just a week. I felt like the whole year or whatever. But really nice getting back to your own schedule really nice getting back to your own life yeah having family come back to back is never good just elongates that time that you're all thrown off of your schedule yeah yeah i don't like that it's also so because they're just on vacation mode you're in normal life mode and i don't know if you guys feel like this but we always feel like we have to try to help them like help make their vacation fun and oh, worth totally. it. Oh, totally. Because it's like they're, they're only here for a week. You're yeah. here all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it always comes up. We're like, hey, what do you what do you guys want to do? Oh, whatever you guys want to do. Like totally. And, and like, then I want to sit on the couch and yeah. watch Netflix. Do you guys want to do that? I'm gonna stay inside. Didn't think go that. work, or maybe I'll just go surf in these six foot waves. You want to come? Yeah. And like die. Yeah. It's yeah. like an inside joke now with my in-laws. Like, um, the last two days I was working like in town, so I like wasn't a part of it at all. And then I come back, it's like, oh, okay, Tyson's back, so now he can like tell us what to do. Because <laughs> like beginning of the week, I was like, dude, like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? I don't know. Someone would present a plan, and like it just sounded awful, and so I'd be like, or we could do this, and they're like, yeah, and then we go do it. So now it's like an inside joke that like I just direct the team. Tyson's the Tyson's the go to. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard being that guy. It's hard being it that guy. It really is. I know. And it's not like I feel like it's not like that anywhere else. I go home to like visit my parents in Camarillo and I'm not just like, All right guys, what are we doing? <laughs> They're like, Right. Oh, I don't know. They're like, Go yeah. Go weed the backyard if you want something <laughs> <Yeah>. to do. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, Gosh dang it. Go weed the backyard. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's hard too when People have never been to Hawaii come out. And then especially up here, because they're far away from all of the super touristy stuff, like down Waikiki and all that. So then they ask you, like maybe they want to go down to Waikiki and you're just like, I'm not doing that. And all you want to do is just like go to the beach and just chill. Mm -hmm. But then like they just want to do so much stuff. Yeah. The swap meet. The swap meet. Oh, not the swap. The <laughs> freaking swap meet. You have to pay like $8 in cash to park there. Just to walk around and look at things that you don't want. Hawaiian shirts and stickers, hydro flask. It's terrible. I wanted to kill them. I swear. Like, <laughs> not, my, not, my, not my people coming in, the swap meet people. We like showed up one time and they were like, it's $9 to, and they're like, uh, cash only. And then they were like, oh, and we don't, we don't give, like, change. I swear, I gave them, like, a 10, and they were like, all right, you can go through. Basically 10 bucks. Yeah, I'm like, yo, what the, what is this operation? I have beef with Hawaii's cash-only stands. Bunch of Dude, so many people. tax evaders. Parking all over town. Like, I don't know what kind of tax evasion is going on in there. Oh, but just... parking all over town is always cash-only and always, like, 25 bucks. I swear people are just buying those orange vests from like Walmart and going there to a parking lot and just collecting money. They're not even associated. They just <laughs> they show hey, up. I respect the hustle, honestly. That's hilarious. Dude, I know. F cash only. Get a freaking card reader. The 21st century. I found free parking though. I just had to skate 15 minutes. But yeah, I already told you guys that. You lied. Oh, yeah. Okay. Jace's birthday was on Saturday. Jace turned one. The means I, one. I've survived a year of fatherhood. Uh, Jace so. survived a year of being alive. Yeah. So Mac made him a cake. 
which you guys saw. It was, I don't know, a foot in diameter, it was I guess. A full cake. It was a, a full-on cake. It was not it's, like a small child's cake. It was like a regular... Not a cupcake. Cake. Not a cupcake. And so, of course, for the one, for the first birthday, you let them just have at it. It's their cake. And so we, we put it in front of him, and then he just... Yeah, some kids just kind of smash into it, like maybe take a couple bites. He just like grabs a piece, puts it in his mouth, grabs another piece, puts it in his mouth, and then just continues on. He ate half of that cake. It was so much. <laughs> it was. I don't know how it fit in his stomach, dude. His stomach's what? Like that big? Yeah. The cake was half of him. Dude, at least. honestly. It really was. And Probably three-fourths. What's really funny <laughs> is he kept his right arm back. And he was just grabbing with his left arm. Just his left chilling. hand. <laughs> yeah, he didn't get his right hand like dirty. Hmm. <laughs> he was, he was just, just his left. Yeah. Is he left handed? No. Well, but, but that's when he's relaxing. Right hand yeah. is aggression, mm-hmm. left hand is he's just chill. Is, he's like, <laughs> they left this year. Nobody's coming for it. <laughs> he this starts slowing down cake. big time about halfway through. And he's just leaning back like this. Slump. He would still every once in a while grab a piece, <laughs> put it in his mouth, and then he passed out on grandma for like an hour and a half right after that. Awesome. Was the sugar crap. Super immediately. funny. Immediately. Woke up and was totally fine. Totally normal. Never threw it up or anything. Any gnarly poopy diapers? No, dude. What a tank. I don't know where he put that. What a tank. He absorbed it all. He did. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Jace is over 99th percentile for height. So, big kid. Yeah, he's growing. Crazy. Oh. Went all into his bones. Because yeah. he's not like super chunky either. No, he's like 50 percentile for weight. Yeah, like, so he's, he's very tall and skinny. Yeah, tall and skinny. So. When did that become a thing? Just like baking a cake and then just having. Your child just try to eat the whole thing. What's the tradition? I, like, when, I feel like that is very recent. Well, now here in Hawaii, too, first birthdays are like a really big deal. Mm. Yeah. People throw, I mean, we did a little little gathering and yeah, know, catered anything. some food. But some people rent out like Chuck E. Cheese's and big gyms and do hours of decorations. First birthday. Yeah. It's huge out here. <laughs> I don't get that logic. Because they don't. They don't They're not going to remember it. it. It's, it's so much more, stress for you. I feel like they're really celebrating the fact that the baby survived the year. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's a fragile first year, man. That's true, a yeah. lot can go wrong in that first year. Those first couple of weeks when they don't have any muscle and they just are like a sack of potatoes, their head goes everywhere. You're like, oh, my God. So fragile. But so resilient at the same time. For real. No. Babies, human babies are weird because any other baby, animal, if you just leave it, they'll survive most likely. Yeah. They get up and start walking like baby deer. Like, yeah. Or gazelles. Pop out and they're baby. just like. They're good to go, you know? <laughs> Give me a little milk. I'll start chewing on some grass. <laughs> Dude, human babies will just straight die if you leave them. Yeah. All the way up until a couple of years probably, yeah. you know? I don't get that because like I think it's gazelles or something similar can literally run. Like 40 miles an hour the day out of the born. womb. I kid you not. <laughs> they come out trained. David Attenborough told me, and I believe him. <laughs> Isn't that who that is? The, uh-uh. National, the National Geographic guy? Oh. <laughs> the guy with a really thick accent. With the soothing voice. Yeah, exactly. But at Love the same guy. time, he like has, like gazelles have. To. Yeah, dude. I was literally He's still like, getting eaten. It was literally like a, it was the thing where it showed like they were born and then there was a brush fire like later that day. And the brand new baby was just. Cooking, <laughs> cooking, booking it, dude. I I'd never seen anything like it in my life. Cooking, yeah, it was insane. Yeah, they, ah, uh, but no, uh, but he wasn't cooking. He was, <laughs> he was gone, man. Yeah, Dang, they don't dude. come out doughy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Freaking crazy. Holy baked. Hmm. Well, I know Sam's happy for this next one. Oh, oh yeah. So, if our listeners have been following along, Sam gave a tip the other day. It was a quote you heard about fashion and it was like if your wife hates it, it means you're killing it or something like that right yeah if your wife doesn't hate your fit you're not trying hard enough that's what it was so um i i have pinterest and i was going through it for like living room ideas and stuff 
and then I got like Hawaii fashion ideas. I saw some guys like tucking in their shirts and like wearing it a certain way. And so I did that for work. I'm like, what do you think? And she's like, I'm not going to lie. I hate it. <laughs> and at first I was like, dang. And then it, Sans quote came into my head. Let's go. I was baby. like, <laughs> means i'm killing it yeah <laughs> see no dude. and i bet did anybody did anybody tell you looked you looked nice that day at work no nah. <laughs> but actually other people told me they hated it too. yeah <laughs> everyone seemed pretty on board <laughs> they hated it i thought i looked good though that's all that really matters. that's all that matters dude that, that is all that matters. no dude, really comments awesome. on Confidence. anything at work though yeah exactly like, everyone's just people are kind of in their own cubicles at my my job bad okay I love that, dude. Vindication. Your words are, I'm listening. They're keeping. They they ring. He they wasn't ring. wearing women's sunglasses, though. You know. It's all right. He will one these There's days. a college shirt tucked in. <laughs> <laughs> like why the did Re hate it? No, wait, why did Re hate it then? It was. Just... I think the fact that it was tucked in. Oh. She couldn't handle the, the tucked in. Shirt looks lit, dude. Good. You should try a French tuck. Is that what it's called when they just tuck in the front? Oh, oh just yeah. the front yeah. or like one half of the front? Yeah, is no. that what it is? I don't know. Uh, Tan Grant, the queer eye guy. Oh, oh yeah, he yeah, has yeah. Like, he has people do that all the time. He's mm -hmm. into the French, French tuck. Yeah, it's um, tucking it in now. It's funny how things follow a cycle of like. It was rebellious to untuck your shirt, mm -hmm. and not because everyone has it untucked. Rebellious to tuck in your shirt. <laughs> yeah, dude. So it's like always yeah, figuring do you out. Remember a when way. It was like a few years ago, everyone was tucking in their t shirts to their pants. Do you guys remember that? Um uh, no. there was like a trend going around where it was just like if you were wearing jeans or chinos or like this and you were just wearing like a regular t shirt, you'd like tuck it in. Right. And that was it. Mm -hmm. And everyone was losing their minds. They're like, Are you freaking kidding me? Everyone but me and Alex. <laughs> and I literally, I, I did it for a while and I was around my dad and my dad's like, oh, like that's what we did when we were young. Like everybody had their shirts tucked it's in. It's that cycle. Yeah. But everyone was yeah. like, this is ridiculous. You look so dumb. And my dad's like, you look nice. <laughs> like, Thank you. So funny. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. He's like, you look very Actually, like 1940 styles are coming back. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. With the tucked shirts, my dad for sure did that with like his jeans and a t-shirt. Yeah. He'd tuck his t-shirt in. I vividly remember him like cutting the grass with that look, you know. <laughs> Classic, dude. Mr. Asu, I feel like he'd look good. He was killing white t-shirt, jeans. Yeah, dude. Tucked in. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always been an untuck kind of guy, though. Like I always just thought untuck is better, especially um, with our volleyball uniforms. I hate it. We had like two teammates that would always tuck in their jerseys. Oh. I feel like that's inefficient for volleyball. Like you're coming up, coming yeah. untucked anyways. I don't think it matters to be honest. Um, they're like super stretchy and all that, but it just mm. looks so nerdy. Yeah, <laughs> it just looked bad. Yeah, it's like why are you guys doing that? Alex is in the corner. Nerd, <laughs> nerd. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> I told them straight to their face. <laughs> Good man. Yeah, no, I I agree with you. I I hardly ever tuck stuff in, but I. I respect the hustle, dude. I'm trying new things. Exploring. Speaking of trying new things. Easy. It is November. And if you zoom in. <laughs> not too video, much. <laughs> you, you don't see need that. to zoom in that far, right? <laughs> He's growing out a little stash for Movember. Mm. We need to get you a glass of milk. <laughs> that can stick all in your stash. <laughs> Rose. Are you growing out yours or no? No. No. Have you shaved yet? In November? Uh, in November. Yeah, like my neck. Does that count? You are, you've already had that. Well, I've yeah. shaved the rest of my face. but Oh, I didn't, and I didn't start shave. I, I just trim it. I never shave. I just trim it. When's the last time you've been clean shaven? Uh, last time I was clean shaven. I don't know. A year. Wow. But Jess digs it. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, she didn't. Just a testament to powering through that everybody always comes around. Everybody comes around. You just got to do what you got to do, what you want to do, and people will lean into it eventually. So in the beginning, Jess didn't like it at all. 
he's like, oh, it looks patchy or it, um, I don't like it. Like it's too scruffy on my face or whatever. And now she'll tell me every time I'm going to trim my beard, she'll be like, do not do it too short. Cause Dang. she likes it. Yeah. She really likes it now. My so. wife told me I look mysterious with the mustache. Ooh. She's like, like, who is this man? David Hasselhoff. I'm a new man. Who is this man? I was going to make a pedophile joke, but I couldn't think of one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was just as good. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make fun of me, but you can't. You yeah. don't know who I am anymore. Yeah. Too mysterious. I'm too mysterious. <laughs> I think you just need some of those like horn rimmed glasses. Yeah. They're really big, like aviators, but they're clear. And then uh, like a, a van, you know? A van. <laughs> and a van. I think it was great. A white. Yeah, no, I, I think grow it's every, good. Can you grow hair here or not really? I No, not even. Like, even if I don't shave it, you won't see anything. Hmm. Dude, grow it where you have it, you know? I just have like a goatee. A little soul patch. Love it. That's about it. Hey, dude, grow the stash. The stash looks good. Dude, go back I've, to I've it. made attempts before. This is the thickest it's ever come in. Thank you. Slowly but surely. Love it. It took 27 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, going back to what you were saying about like everyone comes around. That's how I'm hoping for my <laughs> Mac hates my facial hair and my chain that I'm wearing. The chain? Hates it so much. Dude, that golden chain on that light brown skin of yours. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Turn up the temperature fire, in here. Fire me up, baby. Um, yeah. But it is true. If you just like do something or wear something for long enough, people get used to it. And then if you like, if you shave, I'm sure everyone would be like, what? You look Who does? a little weird, you know? Because we're not used to it. Totally. Then we'd get used to it. But that's kind of how I'm hoping. I just keep wearing the chain. I haven't been able to grow the facial hair out for too long. Like maybe three weeks. I feel like you could grow a mean beard. Yeah, it's a little, it's patchy in here. Like on my cheek. It'd be more like a chin. Yeah, my chin and then like stash. But how to power through it, dude. Keep yeah. it up. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> if you ever gone just stash, Sam? Me? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, when I was at BYU, Idaho, they don't let you grow a beard, okay. but you can have a mustache. And so I started growing uh, the mustache at BYU, Idaho. And yeah, I had it, um, I started right around the time that I started dating Jess. Um, and yeah, I don't know if it was my best look, but it wasn't my worst look. Um, I really like, I wish I had a fuller mustache cause I love the look of like a really full mustache and like bushy. <laughs> yeah. Like a really thick mustache and then kind of like I see what you mean. a really yeah. tapered beard. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. I think it's a good look on a guy's face. It makes him look, because a beard just makes you look kind of fat. If it's too big, it adds a lot of weight to your face. You trim this down, you look nice and thin. I was going to say, dude, you should try to lose like 10, 15 pounds and then shave. Mm. And people would like lose their minds when they say it. <laughs> Ouch, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the truth can really hurt sometimes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, but facial hair alone. But if you add that in with actually like losing a significant amount of weight and then you shave, yeah, it's like you're a completely new person. You know. I remember when I had long hair and then I cut it and I felt like I looked so much more jacked all of a sudden. <laughs> Dude, your long hair was insane. I just saw a picture the other day of us three when we were, I think we were on this couch. Oh. We like took a photo and Tyson had long. Like last winter? Yeah, and Tyson had long hair and it was like a jump scare. He looked like that, what's that quarterback that was like at Tennessee that has Trevor the long. Trevor yeah, Lawrence? Trevor Lawrence. That's exactly who you look like. Honestly. It was Trevor Lawrence. I gotta look him up. What's his name? Trevor Lawrence? All yeah. right. You yeah. look just like him. Just like him. With your long hair, I was dying. Plays for oh, the Jaguars. No. Like spitting image. I was like, what the? <laughs> we ha why do we have the same smile, dude? <laughs> what the fetch? He's a good quarterback, I think. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's a good quarterback. So, worth people to. Oh my gosh. There's some really funny photos of him. Yeah, dude. He's got, he had the, he had some, or he has some luscious locks, dude. 
I mean, his chin's like twice the length of mine, but <laughs> we got like the same smile. That is so funny. Kind of squinty eyes. He's so. the, the taller version of Tyson. More athletic. Dang, dude. More just better. Alex is on a crusade <laughs> to freaking just out here. point out our freaking insecurities. What the F? <laughs> what is on? He's on one. No, but I remember the first time I started trying to grow out my beard was during COVID. <laughs> that is also when I was probably fattest. Besides like six months ago. <laughs> I was about the same. 240s. Uh, I look back. It looked so bad because my mm. face was super round. Yeah. And then adding some facial hair just made my face look super fat. Very Dude, fat. Shout out to you on Jace's first birthday. Whole table is talking about how yacked you are, dude. Dang, dang. You were there for that, right? <laughs> yeah. You, you know who brought it up? Um, Maddie. She's like, Yo, <laughs> tell her to chill. Dang. Yeah, yeah. Relax. <laughs> I'm like, That was kind of left field for you to bring it up, <laughs> yeah. but you Hunter, have a point. <laughs> Hunter's like, Just sweating. He's like, Yeah, yeah, no, he looks great. Hunter's he's like, he's like doing push ups. He yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just curling under the table. He's like, <laughs> thanks uh, man yeah because i think when we were at freddy's because uh, hunter and maddie were there yeah yeah you're coming out of the water just looking like a greek god Ooh. i guess you're looking good Alex. drop the fitness thanks, drop the fitness um what's the word <laughs> fitness routine drop the fitness routine dude lincoln bio <laughs> stop lincoln bio <laughs> stop uh gatekeeping Al- alex's program i have given you both the program <laughs> i'm on day two of it uh, Heck yeah. yeah it's pretty killer spoiler it's three 45 minute workouts a week <laughs> which is insane i was telling them that because you've like explained to me everything you do i'm like yeah he only does some bodybuilding three times a week for 45 minutes <laughs> <laughs> and then it is it is all food you know that's the, the one thing i realized because I did volleyball for five years, Division One uh, level, and we were working out, conditioning, practicing for so many hours throughout the week. And I, the second half of my career, I was, I'd say, o- overweight, more overweight than like. Really? With all that work? With all that work. So it's, and it's just because I was eating more. Mm. Mm-hmm. Calories, man. They'll get Calories. you. Calories. So. They will get you. All right, let's get into just the tip. I'll go first. Let's do it. Uh, My tip is to plan out your days. Write it down somewhere. I'm going to try to do like hour by hour. Or if there's like a chunk. So I'm like, obviously, like work takes up a big chunk of that. Um, But I've just noticed that I'm wasting so much time throughout the day, just like on my phone or like watching Netflix or whatever. And I'm like, I have a lot of time throughout the day. So I really wanna start blocking out time. Like, okay, uh, like eight to nine is like workout. And then for an hour I wanna do stuff like, I'm trying to like learn the guitar. For 30 minutes every day I wanna plan out, I'm gonna learn the guitar or do something for the guitar. And then for my photography and then for podcast, so that way my days are a little bit more structured and it's not like, oh, what are we, what am I going to do today? Throwing it out the board. Yeah. It's a little bit like, I feel like this, we have it all planned out and it goes a lot smoother. Being intentional. Yeah. Or like a workout program. You have it all planned out. You know exactly what you're doing instead of like, what do I feel like doing today? Yeah. Habit number three, right? Some seven habits. Yeah, I don't remember the order or anything, but which one's that? Yeah, so it's like first you establish your principles or the person you want to be. Um, then you visualize it. And then how do you go about day by day? So you like ask yourself the question, what's one small thing I can do every day that's going to get me to my principles, like who I am? And so photography is like one of the things you want to establish to provide for you guys and you get your creative output from that. And so... That's a priority to figure out what's one small thing you can do every day that'll get you there. Yeah. Yeah. That's the goal. It's super cool. I've tried that before. It definitely helps. And then 
I feel like you'll have one day where everything gets thrown off and then you just stop doing it, you know, like anything else. Totally. So you just have to keep doing it. But. Yeah, I bought a whiteboard and I threw it up on the fridge and I'm going to try to every night go through and write stuff down and then just throw it right there. And it's in a pretty visible location. And so hopefully, hopefully when we come back next week, it's not just the exact same thing written on there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should throw in that kids also mess that up. Oh, no, um, boy. So you can definitely right now get into you the can routine. You plan everything. <laughs> Your kid can just mess everything. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of when, yeah, when you make sure everything's like principle based, you kind of you account for that. My favorite quote from Seven Habits thus far is about um it says you can be effective with things no you can be efficient with things and effective with people so like when you're handling you know things like you're working on whatever you can dial it in and get it super efficient but people like if you have to sit down and have like a serious conversation you can't say this will take about 30 minutes Mm. You can't do that. You can't be efficient with people, but you can be effective with them. So you can't treat people as something to be efficient with, like kids. <laughs> mm. You cannot be efficient with kids. With like someone that's got a kid that's about to turn three, <laughs> you cannot be efficient. If he doesn't want to change his diaper, it's not going to happen. Oh, boy. He will fight, and you will get poop everywhere if you just try to be efficient with it. But I've like found things to be really effective with him and um, like working over a long period of time of just like instilling habits in him. So now I'm at a point where I can say, hey, you're stinky. Time to go get your diaper. And he'll run, grab his diaper and wipes, come back and then lay down and I just change it. He doesn't want to be stinky. He doesn't want to be so stinky. Nice. And I had, it took like, months of instilling in him like you're stinky it's dirty and just talking him through it to get to this point gotcha but it wasn't efficient by any means gotcha <laughs> efficiency would be like throw him on there pin him down do it as fast as you can yeah Paint him but the floor. not effective in the long run i like that that's sick yeah that's been a reoccurring theme constantly <laughs> can't fight to be efficient with people yeah that's cool, though, that, I mean, you either plan to fill your time or your time gets filled for you mm. with, like, social media and That's a good quote. just random stuff. So Totally. Yep. So go. Dude, hit me up. We'll play guitar. Down. Yeah, I've you been, rip, dude. I've been playing uh, more often, too. I've been trying to Sick. Uh, like practice more and stuff, Learn just learn more songs. You have a guitar at home? Yeah, an acoustic. Cool. Yeah. I suck at guitar. Well, maybe I'll band. learn. <laughs> oh, did Re get hers from her family? She did. Nice. Yeah. So now I have a guitar to start learning on. I can play uke, but it's a million times easier than the guitar. We're starting a band. Yeah. <laughs> this will be our last podcast. <laughs> <laughs> on to the next. Yeah. Uh, that was great. So my tip is to be where your feet are. This is a quote that my volleyball coach would say all the time. And I found myself sitting in church the other day, and I was checking out my fantasy scores and stuff. And then I started doing who knows what, looking through my photos and all this other stuff. And about 15 minutes of doing this, I just realized I wasn't paying attention at all, which happens to the best of us. But I thought to myself, like, why am I even here? Like, if I'm not going to pay attention, I might as well not even come uh, because I'm not here. Like, I'm here physically, but mentally, I'm just gone. And so then it got me to put away my phone and, and just think, if I'm going to be here, I'm, I'm going to be present. And so that's the whole gist of this is just be where your feet are. Just be present in the moment. Dude, middle school me, I, was, I didn't even have a phone. And I was just constantly daydreaming all the time to the point where it was like an inside joke with my friends that like like oh tyson's back because we'd all be hanging out and i would just like i can see that drift <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah that <checks. laughs> yeah it's a habit i've been trying to break ever since middle school me 
Yeah, it, it's not even a phone. You can just totally not be there. Yeah. I like that. My turn? Oh, it's not as <laughs> weird as you perceive. So, um, I mentioned it a little bit since we spoke, but my office is very, there's like a social side and like a very quiet, like no one talks and spaced outside. Unfortunately, my department's on that side. Eek. And so I'll literally go to work and maybe talk to one person all day. And I'm like, why do I, why did they make me come into the office of this is, I just jump on a Zoom call at work. Like, this is ridiculous. You jump on Zoom calls in work? Oh, yeah. All the, the time. The ops people at Malama do that, too. I've seen them. I'm like, wait, you're on a video call with that person? <laughs> Who's just, like, two desks over? <laughs> they are, like, what the creative team does this creative scrum every week. And literally three of us will be in a meeting room. I always go to the meeting room. But on the Zoom call, there's people in the office where I'm hearing them talk. And then it's going through there. I'm like, Bro, just get in here. Like, dude, what? it's a very common thing. We're just not in the office. We don't see Bro, it. I so would, we don't see it, but it's ridiculous. I would lose my mind. Yeah. So I've tried to make some goals to like socialize more in the office and stuff. And it's so hard not to feel awkward and weird. And yesterday, my wife was like, hey, we have points with Domino's and you get a free pizza, but we have to use it today. And I'm sick of eating out. So do you want it at the office? I was like, sure. I'm just going to get this free pizza and like offer it to someone random. <laughs> there we go. And I did. One of our copywriters, we sat down and ate, had a great conversation. See, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm like, this might seem really weird. That's the first thing I thought. I'm like, maybe I'll just like save it, bring it home later. I'm like, or this is a great opportunity to get to know someone. No matter how weird it is to offer them pizza. And she didn't even have lunch that day. Whoa. Win win. Dude, talking to people is not yeah. It's not as weird as you think. You guys are social butterflies, knocking doors. <laughs> yeah. Like you... it's weird in an office space when you like see someone all the time, but you never like talk to them. I, I feel like it builds up this wall. The more you see someone and don't talk to them. Hard. That's true, yeah. Like I've seen you two years now and i, I should know you way words. better than i do and i don't know anything about you but we're in the same space yeah I feel all that. the time oh yeah it's like same with like neighbors and stuff like i'll see oh, yeah. neighbors like across the street and i'm like i've been here for a two years and i haven't said hi yet and i'm like well i can't say hi now <laughs> yeah i can't be like what's your name he's like i've known your name for a year and a half what the freak i don't know yeah, yeah um, so if you went and talked to them it's not gonna be as weird as you think it is that's so true Got to break down that wall. Yeah. I had a cool experience with that at a Jiffy Lube. Getting my brake fluid flushed and, I don't know, some random stuff. I was sitting outside in, like, their waiting area, and this lady was on the phone. And I just decided, yeah, I'm not going to be on my phone this time. And so I was just sitting there, just, like, letting my mind wander, look at stuff. She gets off the phone and then sits kind of near me. And I'm just like... Tapping my knee, look over. I'm like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> I just started talking to this lady in the mid 50s. Let's go. Uh, and both of our cars took forever. And so we, we talked for like 40 minutes. Just this random stranger. Whoa. Turns out, could have filmed the whole podcast. <laughs> I did. I could have. <laughs> she trains like uh, runners, do all these races and stuff. And I've always been interested in like personal training and stuff. So I just kind of picked her brain. It was such a nice conversation. And then we went on our ways. It's like, dang, that's cool. You're like, is this what people used to do? <laughs> yeah, you just <laughs> talk to strangers. <laughs> Dude, that's and beautiful. Every, and everyone yeah. loves those people. Like if, you know, I, mean, I guess there's always, there's always. The Debbie Downer that well, really doesn't want to be talked to. Right. But I'd say more often than not, people, everybody loves the person that's just personable and willing to have a conversation. And I've never gotten out of one of those conversations and been like, well, that was weird that they wanted to talk to me. Yeah. I'm always like, dang, that person's got their head on their shoulders. I wonder I, if there's some like real introverts out there that like, it just gives them severe anxiety if you said hi to them. Or something. Dude, I'd say I feel uh, like that's a minority, right? Yes. Yeah, I'd say the, in the beginning, most people don't want you to talk to them. Mm. But after you've 
you know, struck up a conversation and then you're kind of going into it, then it's, then they feel like it's not so bad either. You Mm. know, I've had those, (laughs) I've had those people on flights that talk. That's like, that's, that's kind of iffy. I, I, yeah, if you I just want to sleep. Hours. Yeah, yeah. That's like tough. I lean a little bit the other way for flights. I'd say you're trapped. <laughs> yeah, you are allowed to talk um, before the plane takes off. <laughs> once that plane is in the air, and once it lands, <laughs> shut up. Don't talk to me. Yeah, like you can. We can explain exchange pleasantries as soon as there's this <laughs> going on in the background. I don't want to yell over that to ask you about your kids and this is my grandkid yeah i'm like (laughs) shut up i have headphones they're noise canceling and i have a a limitless amount of content on the (laughs) internet i don't need you but before that i'm down before that i'm down i have i've been on flights with some very talkative people before bro one guy but like so he was like our age and he was just like the most interesting guy I've ever talked to, mm. but he just was nonstop, like <laughs> constantly talking to everyone around him, talking to the guy in front of him, behind, and everyone was just listening in on this conversation because he was loud too. Mm. And he said something so interesting that I'll never forget. He was like, you know, my personality is kind of like really spicy food. You either love it or you hate it. <laughs> <laughs> super loud everyone around is just like amen yeah yeah yeah, seriously it felt like that everyone's just like watching the show while this guy is just like ranting and i'm just like "Mm -hmm." (laughs) half the people are booing half of them are clapping you're like all right yeah about 50 50 yeah and i ended up talking to him because i was standing up with my son who was crying whole different story but i was like in the back of the plane and he was standing there and he was like super nice he's like you know i respect you for like taking the initiative and like holding your son because i've been on a plane where it's the same situation and the dad just like dishes it off to the mom the whole yeah. time and like it was the opposite i was the one holding it the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> but i'm always throwing her under the bus yeah. stop, <laughs> she's gonna be like i don't think i want you doing this podcast anymore <laughs> uh but yeah he's really cool that's cool man i like spicy food apparently mm. I, like I this, love it. I like this flavor. Yeah. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's get into hey, some it? listener questions. I think we have a caller from California. Again? Yeah. No, Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> yeah. You do it in Cleveland. A, in a Cleveland accent. What do they sound like in Cleveland? They sound like this. Normal. <laughs> They sound like this. <laughs> they sound normal. <laughs> That's what you sound like, Tyson. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Dude, I set myself up for that one. <laughs> All right. Uh, you I'm going to go last. You're going to go last? Or not first. I haven't thought of it. Oh, I can go first. Ah, right, you go first. All right. From Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Where is this coming from? Yeah, I don't know, dude. A lot of gays in Ohio. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be gay, but uh, <laughs> you're trying to be mentally trying challenged. To be... All right, continue. <laughs> Uneducated. Come on. Yeah. Oh, uh, is that what you're doing? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, bringing it back in because this is actually more of a serious question. This is a funny thing. Um. Anyways, Alex. Since we talked about value and principle-based living um, a few episodes ago when you, Max, uncle or cousin, passed away. Uh, Max cousin. And kind of... Which I found out he is a 96 year. He's our age. Whoa. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, how's the journey been since then? How's the search been? Have you found any principles? Any aha moments? <laughs> um, yeah, still f- just ideas floating around. Um, I, it's hard. Those things you wanna, <laughs> you wanna like get it right. You're trying to think of your life's mission statement. <laughs> That's like a deep question. It's I'll like, say, what's the purpose of my life? And uh, um, so no. <laughs> 
<laughs> what have you done to get the wheels turning a little bit? Yeah, I've, I just have a note that I've written some stuff down. I've um, every once in a while you just sit down and like yeah things down. Yeah, kind of ponder it. I was trying to just base everything off charity first and and think why that's important to me just because that was like your first thing and i'm like oh yeah that's that's a good attribute principle to have um so i've been thinking about that a lot and what charity means and what it looks like to to just have that attribute i guess um as far as it you know the rest of it goes i don't have much but I guess more so just been trying to see what that like it's one thing to say like I'm a charitable person but it's another to kind of envision what that looks like you know and to be it dude because yeah. I've made that my principle it's been I see all the times where I'm like not being charitable or I'm being like really short like not the whole like long suffering enduring all that stuff like if free does like one thing that sets me off like I'm totally not being charitable and I'm like yeah. So I guess the biggest thing I've done is I've taken my past experiences and I've tried to put them through a lens of charity and say, okay, was I charitable here? How could I have been better? And most of the times it's like, yeah, I was terrible with it. You know, whether yeah. it's someone out on the doors that I'm trying to sell or if it's my family or friends, it, yeah, it's rough. And then you see that your life is totally centered through one of those other frames realize you've fallen into one of those other centers yeah so it's kind of crazy if you're not like intentional about that so we're all hypocrites yeah we're all hypocrites prideful (laughs) i was actually thinking about that the other day like everyone has principles they want to live by but whether you live by it or not is like really hard like sometimes you'll have wins a lot of times you'll have losses where you're like not being charitable. Um, and I think the key difference is if you like admit that you're not being charitable. Like cause some people would be like, no, and like justify it as much as they like can and don't um, own up to mistakes. Like imagine if politicians, every time they've made a mistake, admitted it. It's hard when you live in the public spotlight. Yeah. Um, yeah, my first attribute that I had thought of actually before charity was honesty. Like, oh, I should just be honest all the time. That's really freaking hard to be 100% honest, you know? Even if you think about little things like telling your kids about Christmas and Santa Claus and Are you claiming and, and of our, and of our young listeners out there. <laughs> ruining people's lives <laughs> yeah cut that out yeah. <laughs> but yeah I like that right there yeah thanks sorry for putting you on the spotlight a bit about that oh no it's okay I have a uh, more light hearted question for Sam oh wait for Tyson oh for Tyson no for uh, Sam I know for me Alex just see Sam. the names all yeah. mixed up there. Sam you have like a Eurohawk a going on yeah Dude, what? Good for him. <laughs> that's sick. He's got like a Eurohawk look that way. You see how he like faded it down? Yeah, he cut yeah. it himself. Dude, it looks Last sick. I was, I was telling him I'm I haven't right cut over. the back yet. Oh, yeah. Well, Mac hasn't cut it. Looks dead. I never dude. cut the back myself, but Thanks, maybe you dude. should keep it going though. Like, oh, the keep the, the tail. Yeah, dude, yeah. Keep the tail. Anyway, all right. What's your question? Thanks, dude. So yeah, I'm calling in. To talk to the Fashion Nova. Um, so I want to know, since you are into fashion, all that, where are your top spots to shop? Where do you find your your pieces? Oh boy, hold on. Hello. 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 Yeah. I don't think so. Watermelon sugar. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> 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 
to all of our listeners out there, Sam just got a knock on his door, and he's bringing back something uh, pretty pretty interesting. What what you got there, Sam? Coconuts and whatever this is. Oh, that's a jackfruit, a really small one. Because those get like like toddler Big? size. Jackfruits Jeez. get huge. Oh, I wonder if that's what's on my neighbor's tree. Those huge things. Oh, probably. Probably jackfruits. Yeah. They're <laughs> they're really hard to cook. They fall and <laughs> it just sounds like something bad happened. <laughs> just super loud in our backyard. Yeah, something bad. Oh, something <laughs> bad. <laughs> a oh. meteor just landed. Yeah. Uh back to my caller question, Sam. Where do you where do you get your fashion pieces? Top three shops, maybe? Yeah. Oh, boy. That is so hard, dude. Um, I'm gonna be honest. Uh number one is just thrift stores. Thrift stores have dude, they always so the reason I love thrift stores is they have um they're they're very durable pieces normally. They've like withstood the test of time. Like someone else has worn them, washed them, and then given them to a store. It's not gonna shrink on you. Right. It's not gonna shrink. It's already been washed. Like if you find a, a good piece, you know it's it's like it's durable. been around the block. Yes, already. exactly. Yeah. As opposed to other things that you get, like a t shirt you get and then you wash it one time and you're like, I hate this. It's terrible now. It's small yeah. or whatever. So thrift stores, they're sick um i get a lot of stuff from actually abercrombie and fitch believe it or not <laughs> i do believe it dude <laughs> they're coming out to play these days they I really have are no doubt that you're all about that <laughs> dude, believe it or not like like and it's not like it used to be the worst place when we were like in high school because everything would say like Abercrombie across the chest. The big yeah. stitching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dude, it's completely different. They've like completely rebranded. They're all about like basics. So there's like no logos on anything. Like Old Navy style? Yeah, kind of like Old Navy. Or Uniqlo? That's yeah. Cool. I don't know. I don't really. Do you shop at Old Navy? I don't really shop at Old Navy. Uh, Old Navi? No. I think I bought a pair of chinos from there like years ago. Yeah. Like, last time. But yeah, Abercrombie's cool. It's just like basic stuff. And where else do I go? Any online places that you get pieces from? No, right? dude, I hate shopping online. It never fits. Right. Yeah. It never fits the way you want it to. Only if it's like something I know, like those Uniqlo shirts I wear all the time. Yeah. Like I know exactly how they're good. I can fit. I order those, but I don't experiment. Yeah. Um, I don't know, dude. Billabong, Billabong's cool. They're going like super retro these days. No? Did you know all those surf companies are like totally intertwined? Are they totally? There's this company called Board Riders. Mm. I had an interview with them. Finally. Whoa. Yeah, didn't get the job. <laughs> so, Spoiler uh, alert. <laughs> yeah. I gotta throw them in the garbage can then <laughs> good man but i think it's not all of those companies but it's a like a big majority of them like rip curl ruka billabong um not vulcan maybe vulcan but like some random ones too like dc shoes and stuff they're, they're all like under the same marketing and like distribution and they'll, they'll just have like different designers Weird. So if you like look at the prices for everything, they're all like very similar. Exact same. And just in they're kind of different niches. Yeah. A lot of companies are like that. There's like energy drinks like Rain and Monster, Sam Umbrella. It's awesome. A lot of candies, like chocolate companies. It's really just like Hershey or whatever that yeah. owns everything. Yeah. I used to work at the Gap in high school and the Gap, Old Navy, and Banana Republic are all the same. Oh wow. Same company. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, you just, think they're competitors, but they're just yeah. same company. They're like, go ahead, shop at that other store. That's us too. <laughs> yeah, go across the street. <laughs> uh, the old company I used to work at, um, the Golden Hippo was like the background name, but they had like 20 different brands. And yeah. we totally get like people all the time leaving a bad review on one of our brands. Yeah, I'm going with the other one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. And we're like, shoot, bye. <laughs> <laughs> So funny. That is. That's awesome. 
Cool. All right. I'll jump into mine. We got a few minutes. All right. This is for Tyson. Uh-oh. We can open it up to both of you. All right, here we go. You know what a speed, you know what speed rounds or speed questions are? Okay. Yeah, I have one. Lightning round? Yeah, lightning round. Like first thing just, that comes to my head. First thing that comes to your head, you just okay. going for it. All I'm right? Scared. Alice can pipe in too if you, have a, if you have an opinion on any of these. All right, number one. Would you run a marathon if you couldn't tell anyone about it? Yes. Wow. No. <laughs> <laughs> Liar. <laughs> There's no way you would. All right. If your son was gay, would you disown him or would you just try to beat it out of him? I would disown before beating. <laughs> that those are my only two <laughs> options. How strong is the kid? <laughs> Good question. He's one know. jack little guy. Yeah. Can you Up take to, it? Yeah. When, when did he come out of the closet? All right. Um, have you ever thought that maybe you're autistic and this is all just in your head? Yes. Whoa. I constantly thought? think that like, not autistic, but like that I had some sort of thing that happened that triggered something that like all of this is just made up in my head that my wife and kid doesn't actually exist. That it's just like, everyone's just letting me play this like, cause I'm happy. It's a virtual reality game, dude. Yeah. And I'm just like in a straight jacket somewhere i i have that thought i'm like and it's usually after something really good i'm like life is too good and i'm like it's not real <laughs> <laughs> instantly all right <clears throat> uh what would you charge for a sexual favor versus what's the lowest you would actually go oh. <laughs> well, but you're not like, gonna tell me what the favor is, because <laughs> that's a, that's just a huge baseline. Just <laughs> what's a baseline? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, mine stopped recording. Oh, did it? Oh, flip. All right. Yeah, no, right. That is means it, is it? What's your timer say? Uh, yeah, sure. I can just go to the next one. I li- Please. I, I like that. I like. The- Sam really wants to know though. I the like cost. The- I just like. The He's second. been budgeting. <laughs> He's <Yeah>. been- <laughs> just want to see if I can afford you. I just like the idea of like, well, you know, if you could pick the price, you know, what would it be? But like, I charge ten grand. What's the lowest you'd actually go though? Wait, you charge ten grand? What if I offered you nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars? Ten grand's my baseline. <laughs> Liar. All right. And also, really depends on the favor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kiss, marry, That's my basic kill. Suite. <laughs> Kiss, Mary, Kill, Edna from The Incredibles, Roz from Monsters, Inc., that slug lady oh that my. always says Wazowski really funny, and Ursula from The Little Mermaid, the fat All right. mermaid. Easy, dude. <laughs> Easy? Yeah. <laughs> I'm marrying Edna. I don't care about the other two. Oh, yeah. I'm marrying Edna, kissing Ursula, and killing the slug. Same. <laughs> Made it too easy. <laughs> Poor Roz, dude. Poor Roz. <laughs> All right. Those are my burning questions. My... Your burning questions. I had to know. <laughs> Those are good. Thanks. Solid. I love that. I um, Those are really good. I was, I was trying to come up with um, caption ideas for an Instagram post on my photography account. And it was the one where there was like the sunset was really cool. And so I had this list of all the different captions I wanted to... Um, I have them right here. It was, um, this sunset definitely talks about other sunsets behind their backs. <laughs> this sunset probably has a pride issue. This sunset was hot and it knew it. This sunset was an only child. Oh, sorry, favorite child. Eh. This sunset made me self-conscious. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, if this sunset started a podcast, I would listen to it. And then the last one was, if this sunset sunset ran a marathon, I would actually care about it. Oh. <laughs> Pretty funny. I love the last. Is one. that your amateur hour? Um, sure. Been, dude, that was good. <laughs> but no, I was just trying to come up with captions. But yeah, I love it because I don't care who you are, dude. If you run a marathon, you're telling someone, if not everyone, about it. Mm. Everybody has to post. I think I have a different mentality. 18 weeks out. And I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. Go run it. 
I would rather sure. do it and then, uh, you know, like five years down the road, if it just kind of comes up, then you're like, oh, yeah, I did. I ran a marathon. Yeah. Everyone's like, what? <laughs> when? The, the second after you run it, you can tell people, sure. It's the before. I'm just like, I don't care. <laughs> you're on a run. Cool. Friggin' punks. All right. Let's get into some, just some deep dives. While we're uh while we're just sitting here joking, I'll do mine first. Uh what's the worst superpower you guys can think of? There's some really bad ones out there. Mm hmm You watch some Incredibles too? Uh remind me. There's like all these supers at the very end that just have like weird powers. Like one <laughs> of them's just like regurgitating Gross. like lava. <laughs> Super nasty. Um Yeah. I think of the, well, I, I don't know if it's a superpower, but any of those like mutants, like the the lizard guy in Spider Man, you know, what I'm mm, talking about. Yeah, like you just you're not a human anymore. <laughs> that would kind of suck. Yeah, to be like a superhero or to have a superpower, but it changes your physical appearance, like yeah. the like the um, Hulk as opposed to Superman. You're like yeah, just as strong. Hulk switches back and forth, or the thing. Yeah, or that. Uh -huh, oh, yeah. Or like sucks. the big blue. I don't know. Um, one that I was thinking of as I was brainstorming was the ability to change people's shirt sizes while they were wearing them, but just by one. So, like, I could look at what size is that shirt? Triple XL. Double XL. Is it? Dang. Mm -hmm. so I could change it. So, I could change it to XL just right now. It would make I, me look more jacked. Yeah, just as you're walking down the street. All of a sudden, you'd be like, oh, shirt's a little tight. So you can't reverse it? Mm, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's a really bad superpower. <laughs> I thought we were going to stay within like superpowers that have actually made it into movies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this one just hasn't made it into a movie yet. <laughs> yeah, I think a cool superpower would be to uh, be able to untie people's shoes. <laughs> you know? So it's just like a minor inconvenience. You're like... Gosh, Dude, again? <laughs> you're like running a race. You just untie uh, everyone's. Oh, that's true. Oh my gosh, they train their entire life for like the Olympics and you're just untying shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so effed up. The true villain. Everyone would just get rid of their laces, Velcro, mm. all the way. I know. For real. Undo the Velcro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, we can move past that Anyways. <laughs> let's, do, let's do your guys' deep dives. Okay. Um... I was thinking about self-sufficiency the other day. We do solar all the time. Lots of people, for some reason, care about being self-sufficient and like owning all their power and they want to be off the grid and all this stuff. And a lot of Max family members, they're into like having farm animals and stuff. Whoa. And just nothing huge, but like some chickens. And Does she live in like a really rural area where a lot of people have? farm animals like it's common no <laughs> but a lot of them are just kind of into got, like, that a small like, yard and a pig <laughs> yeah i feel like it's like a super mormon thing dude chickens yeah like jess's mom has chickens yeah and they live in like the middle of the suburb but how like how important is that stuff to you guys like have you ever thought like i want some type of i want a well for water or i want solar energy later on i want some farm animals like any it's of that? not that important because I don't have any of the above. <laughs> so I was going to say, I was like, I guess it sounds important on paper, but I've done zero of those things. It's like so. a goal that I have. If I like had my own or my landlord allowed, I'd have chickens. Um, I raised chickens when I was in college. Huh? Yeah. We started with like 10 and then, then we had 500 on a little farm. Oh. Over... oh, you did it for like work. I did it for work. Oh, that was Jeez. just like for fun. No. In the backyard. I was like, in college? What yeah, are you talking about? But yeah. Free eggs. Because I eat so many eggs that, like, the free eggs is honestly, like, a huge win. Yeah. But if you think about it, there's, so, like, we're so dependent on other people for food and all of our... If you think about someone who lives in a high-rise in a city, they can't do jack squat about anything. And back in the day, you know, everyone had gardens and stuff, and they would pull from that. I think it's important to have like a garden at least. 
Yeah. Something where you can grow your own fruit or Home veggies. Grown tomatoes. Yeah. Tastes better. True. Yeah. Um I <laughs> I have other goals that need to come before that. <laughs> so that's like what I'm focusing on. Like buy the land. <laughs> Pay my rent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not starve. Um but yeah, I think at some point for sure, especially living in like the suburbs my entire life. I would even classify this as like the suburbs. I mean, we're right on top of neighbors and stuff. Yeah. Um so yeah, I have a huge desire to like have land and not live not be able to like see my neighbors or be within maybe shouting distance. So if there's a murderer, someone can come help me. But yeah. Like I would want if another covid happened and you can't just like go to the store or something mm. to still be kind of chilling you know yeah having a well would be cool that would be awesome that'd be dope yeah yeah i don't know down dude you guys want to like move to montana and just <laughs> do like a homestead vibe i got some land in north carolina <laughs> you you no, sound i want to go there <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> You have like a yard? I thought it was like a it's got a yard. Oh, okay. It's a townhouse, but it's got a yard. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'll be a small yard. Could have like two or three chickens. You have a little garden. Is it good climate there to do gardens? Really or? good. Yeah. Oh. It, it, it snow? snows there like w- one day out of the year. Whoa. Yeah. I guess Montana wouldn't be a good spot. It freaking snows six months out of the year. It does get really hot though. Yeah. Yeah. Which kills a lot of Literally everywhere except for like a few places. Everywhere just is really cold in the winter and really hot in the summer. Yeah. That's just how it is. The grass in the summertime though is just like so hard to handle. No, and it was just like because oh. it's so humid and it, it rains a fair amount. Oh. Summertime, a lot of like storm systems come through too. That the grass is just unhinged. Like mm. it, you have to mow it like once every few days. Like. To just keep it at a decent level. That's but then, out yeah, here too. The winter time yeah. comes and it just like all turns brown. <laughs> that was our backyard when we first moved up here, and it was raining like every single morning. Just the grass, yeah, just grows so fast. Super annoying. <laughs> yeah, hate it. Anyways, what about the school system? Who put that? So, speaking of grass, we have a little bit of land. <laughs> um. I guess a little bit of a backyard where we're at now and I've revived the grass there. I will like water it every day and they're kind of like my version of shower thoughts. It's my like while I'm watering the grass thoughts. And I was thinking about my son's turning three. So he's like a year away from going to elementary school. Oh, kindergarten wild. and all that, which is insane. That's crazy. And I was just thinking about how much like, I was just thinking about the school systems in general, how outdated it is. And I heard something recently about like where it even came up from. And we were talking about it a little bit. How like it sparked from the industrial revolution to train kids to be good factory workers. That's what it's for. Saying that out loud sounds so effed up. Is that someone else knocking again or is that Jess? We'll see if they knock again. I think that was someone from the Okay. I think Jess, Jess is down there. That, that's a really weird knock if it was. Yeah. Um, anyways, so I was thinking about like, how could we train our kids now to be like awesome? But I don't know. She, Jess. I was thinking if she was like trying to see if like she could come in. Sorry. Start over. How can we, I said train, but I want to say educate this time. (laughs) Yeah, just. How can we educate our kids to best prepare them for real life and everything? What life looks like now? And I was thinking about this um flow of like learning and working because ideally um you want to be learning every day and then also applying that into something that's going to provide for your family and make you more efficient free up your time and everything and that usually looks like starting a business of some sort developing skills that allow you to start the business i'm learning how to be a good business owner and like find opportunities know how to pay your taxes what's a good deal, what's not, and, like, developing those skills. And, like, the thought I had while I was watering the grass is creating this curriculum of um, half the day you're just learning something new. Um, and, like, 
obviously have to take them through the basics. They have to learn how to read and write and like be able to do that basic stuff. But when it comes to the deep dives later on, they can like choose what they want to do. Half the day they're learning more about it. Maybe it's website creation and designing UX, UI, coding and all that. And then the other half, they're making a website, an e-commerce site that's going to make them money or something. And they can start like getting that mindset of learning valuable skills that they can then apply. And if they can like get a solid like online business going by the time they're 18, like get on them. Awesome. And then also teaching them like not giving them the capital to start that, you know, and like, okay, if you want money to start this website, you're going to have to raise some money somehow. I'm like, we'll give you money, but you got to do chores. And so like they have to put in the physical work first and then they like can raise money to start doing stuff like that. So creating a curriculum based off that kind of mentality. The, thought I had. Yeah, this is one of those things that's on my list of if I'm a billionaire, like <laughs> I would love to, because if you're a billionaire, then you can actually have some big social impact. The thing that I would want to impact is the education system, like you're saying. Um, the way I look at it is people, they need to know about money. They need to know about basic like changing oil and changing your tires. Cause I know so many people that like my sister in law <laughs> didn't know that you needed like change oil, just ran it until it was out of oil and the engine blew up pretty much. Oh um, and that's not an uncommon thing. People just have no idea. Yeah. No, they don't know about taxes. They don't know about any of real world, simple stuff. I have a friend that's never paid his taxes. Sorry. Don't say that name. <laughs> I will not. But like we just need to switch out these things for like science. <laughs> and I don't know. I think there's room for some of these subjects, but beyond like an elementary education, everything that you learn for like math and science and the deep stuff, just, like yeah. deep calculus. Oh necessary. You need to learn how to use a calculator. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And even Basic with problem solving skills and all that, even with like language arts and writing, it's more important of a skill to be able to use AI <laughs> than to write yourself now because AI is like your calculator now. So it's, mm. I don't know. I know, kind of go against your if you were a billionaire, I feel like something like this would actually start small. Mm. Like, and I think we actually have a pretty good opportunity out here in Hawaii because out of anywhere in the United States, Hawaii's education system is the worst. Are we 50th? <laughs> Are we last? I think like Alabama <laughs> takes the cake, but we're pretty close. <laughs> we're high 40s. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. And everyone sends their kids to private schools to get like a good education and everything. Yeah. And we have a small community and a lot of like very like-minded people with young kids. Like it could be an opportunity for us to like, if we decide to homeschool, create this little curriculum this little and see if it becomes thing. something. And then like if other people hear about it and think that's cool too, then it turns into like a small business or whatever. Our own little private school, but something mm. cool. And then we use the money or whatever to buy courses. Like if a kid decides he does want to be a doctor, I don't know how to teach any of that stuff, but we can like find someone that can and then, you know, put them down that path and create the opportunity for it. Interesting. So are you going to homeschool? I don't know. I've always gone back and forth because, you know, the classic thing, I'm like, oh, they're homeschooled. Yeah. They're weird. Not a good... Um, not a good... <laughs> they're always seen as antisocial and, like... Yeah, exactly. It has a bad stigma. It has a very bad stigma. I used to think that, but I don't give a crap about the stigma now. I would yeah. rather my kid have the homeschool stigma than I know. I've gone be one. taught to be a unicorn in kindergarten. <laughs> I know. Dude. I've gone one. I've gone one eighty on so many things. So many. There's there's some a bunch of stats on the amount of people homeschooling in the past five years. It's shot up so far exponentially. Opportunity. It's not uncommon for people to homeschool now. Create a good curriculum. Like, I'd be down to homeschool them up until, like, at least, like, middle school. 
mm. and then throw them into middle school. Middle school is just rough for everybody involved. But I feel like if you've you've taught them enough, like by the time they're, when do you go to middle school? You're like 12? 11, 12. 11? That's funny because I almost feel the opposite. You would take, you would put would them say, in elementary school? Put them in elementary school so they can figure out all the like basics because that's what they teach them like multiplication, ABCs, and you know, basic writing skills and all of that. So by the time they're like in middle school, that's when things start to like go a little bit deeper. Mm. And they can actually say, like, hey, I actually would really like to learn how to design things. Then I would like get them a course for that and throw them into that. It just sucks because. I feel like high school is so good for all of the not actual school stuff. Like high school is just so pivotal for pivotal for human interaction, sports teams, stuff like that, that like really, I feel like shaped you in that time. And I would hate to deprive my kids of that. So that's what sucks. I feel like I would want to homeschool them until like bare minimum. I want them to go to high school, get picked on a bit. Let him get bullied. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. I get bullied constantly. <laughs> mostly by you two. <laughs> yeah, it's because we're homophobes. Yeah. And you know. Wait, what? Wait, 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 what? Huh? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Was ah. it? Did we talk about this the last time? How like. Sam being gay? Yeah. Yeah. How much of a queer he is. What the F? What are you talking about? <laughs> No, um, uh, how like before the industrial revolution and everything, how kids were with their parents and like the family was the unit for a long time. Yeah. Did you yeah. talk about that last mm-hmm. time? Yeah. Same kind of thing. Um, going against what you're saying. <laughs> I just, I think that once you hit a certain point, you've taught them correct principles and then it's up to them to learn them on their own. They got to learn it on their own. That's and so like sure. holding their hand all the way until they're 18 yeah. That's what's going to turn them into weirdos. They definitely need yeah. like a community. Yeah. But high does the community have to be a has to be a high school? It doesn't have to, but I just I don't know, dude. Cuz I think like even within our group of friends, we have a pretty solid community. Yeah, that's true. Like but when I was in North Carolina and it was just like us and if I homeschooled them, that's a whole different game, you know? That's true. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Still think they need to go and get bullied a bit, but yeah. Did you guys get bullied ever? I feel like I thought I was, but I was just really self conscious. <laughs> <laughs> um, in middle school, a bit, yeah. Nothing crazy. Not like wasn't getting beat up. Yeah, I had a great middle school something. experience. I loved middle school. <laughs> the I think I'm one of the only people to ever. Yeah, say that. don't say that. But no, I, I think I had a good school. middle school experience too. I thrived. I'm the king of that school. <laughs> I was selling duct tape wallets and making cash. Were you? Sam, oh Sam bought my. a couple of my wallets. I did. You They're did not. They were cool. They were cool. Were you like a candy bar hustler? No. He was the kingpin of the school. <sighs> yeah, it was just duct tape wallets in middle school. In high school, I sold uh, some frozen Powerades a little bit. But we had a candy guy already, so I couldn't take his job. He already had the business up and running. He had three separate backpacks with with candies and chips and stuff. Dude, that was my little brother. Really? He had employees, dude. He had guys that were getting cuts. Yeah, man. It was ridiculous. I feel like every school had had one or two kids. (laughs) Because, yeah, I had them too. I, I I remember kids doing it. And I was always just like, I don't know what's happening. I don't want to buy your four dollar goldfish. <laughs> um, but what are you saying? Oh, bullying. Bullying. Um, no, I think um, it really has just been like my whole life. I feel like I am kind of. I don't know if it's on like an easy target. Like I do it to myself, kind of. <laughs> but I don't really care because like I'm chilling. I feel like I have. I, I I'll say I have pretty thick skin. Like very few things that people ever say to me and about me, very few things get in. Right, Is that a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on, dude. Bring it on. Sharpen your spears, boys. Um, <laughs> no, and I really feel like that's because pretty early on, I think I just got ragged on a lot. Um, I remember 
<laughs> with your eye patch. I remember you got made fun of a little bit for that. Eye, eye patch? patch? Yeah, because I have like um, one eye is like my brain doesn't use one eye as much. I have amblyopia is what it's called. And so all those little kids that had to patch when they were younger have a patch over their eye. All those little kids? There was, I don't know, there was like three in my. He's the only one. Oh, there was like <laughs> never even heard of it. What? Yeah. Oh, dude, there was like three in when I was doing it. Do you like, use one eye more than the other? Yeah. I think I knew you and maybe one other kid who had. To yeah, do there was it. two other kids in my like kindergarten, first grade, second grade, something like that. When we were really young, that we all, we all had it. Um, it's to like train your other eye to like use one. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, I won't I won't get into the full story. Um. But yeah, I had to patch and then uh, I did and then my eyes got better and then I stopped patching and then it got worse again. And so the doctor was like, well, you can just keep patching for the rest of your life or you just deal with it. Mm. So I just deal with it. So I'm like pretty blind in one eye. Whoa. But um, so the patch, that didn't help. Um, I feel like I was never, I don't know. I don't know what it was. But yeah, dude, I feel like growing up in like our friend group of like our church friend group. I don't know what it was, dude, but I feel like I got ragged on so much more than everyone else. Dude, church friend groups are the most savage. Bro. I remember They're one so time awesome. I felt so validated. One of our like leaders said something like, because there, there was a kid in our group that had some like autism. Um, he was pretty high functioning, yeah. just enough to like get on your nerves, right? Um, but enough to where you're like always in the back of your head, you're like, oh doesn't really have a choice right yeah. but we would all rag on him a ton i mean we we put that poor kid through a lot but one time our leader said something like guys i know that you all rag on sam and i was like thank <laughs> you <laughs> he's like but he has thick skin like we can't rag on this other kid as much so more on sam <laughs> yeah and i was like what the f i was like okay good i feel validated um i just had three older brothers um that are just really freaking ruthless um but i feel like it's made me very resilient and so yeah now i do that's why you can knock doors i do things out of the norm i like things that a lot of people don't like as much um but it doesn't bother me doesn't at all care. yeah i just that's don't care cool. i'm just like this is me bro <laughs> let me be me Go never be me. bro that scene you know what i'm talking about yeah. Hell yeah. What is this? What is that? Let me be me. That was deep. Anyway, somebody else talk. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's good. Yeah. We'll probably get it. Got a little story I could tell. We got like four minutes. Or we got four minutes. Go for so it. So back when I had social media, I remember scrolling um, on Facebook which I would never do. Like Facebook was always kind of the last resort. If you had scrolled all the way through Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, uh, and you're like, okay, what else? And then you just kind of go to Facebook. And the only people who use Facebook nowadays are like really old people. Oh, yeah. Or super weird people. <laughs> really weird. Like really weird. And they post all the time on Facebook. Really political usually. I'm like, who are you posting to? So <laughs> who is your audience? I come across this one girl who posted, and I don't, I don't get the whole label things, but she was nice enough to, to explain it in a very long post about how she's gender fluid. So n not even a she, I guess. But she said, some days I feel like a boy, so I'm a boy. Some days I feel like a girl, so I'm a girl. So my pronouns are she, her, he, him, they, them. But it's different. <laughs> And you have to ask me, like, on any given day. So she wrote this, like, like, I would appreciate it if you would just, instead of assuming that you would just ask me on any given day, like, what I'm feeling like. Like, yeah, sure. Let's just ask everyone what their pronouns are every day. So that, was, that was crazy. But I was imagining. <laughs> Yeah, where's this going? <laughs> Wait, was that it? <laughs> no. So I was imagining. Yeah, I'm just like clowning on this person. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, dang. Um, like, what if they could actually just, anytime they had responsibility, they could just shift. 
Mm. Like, you know, seahorses can change sexes. Yeah. Male to female. It's like when it comes time to work, you're just like, boom, I'm a woman. (laughs) (laughs) And then dinner time comes around, boom, back to a guy. It's like the cop that comes up. Yeah. Uh, I need... No hablo ingles. <laughs> and he starts speaking Spanish. Uh, <laughs> I don't speak Spanish. Uh. And then you uh, you need some social support. So you just switch to they, them. It's like boom, boom, boom. You're switching all the time. Oh, man. So I saw that and I was like, dude, I'm going to start doing that. So just ask me on any given day uh, what, I, what I feel like. It depends I am. on what the responsibilities are in that moment. Yeah. Depends on what you're so, asking me to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So thanks for posting that, Tyson. <laughs> I didn't know this was amateur hour. <laughs> Sucks to suck, Tyson. Surprise! Welcome to my life. <laughs> amateur hour. <laughs> Got him. So, my bullying story. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Woo! Nice, dude. Nice. Thanks for throwing some at Tyson. Way to throw yeah. it. Felt good. You're welcome. Felt good. Well, I had no idea it was amateur hour. I thought you were literally <laughs> just telling a story. I'm like, no, I, 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 I was better that way. I was trying so hard not to laugh. I literally started crying. I could just tell. I was like, gosh, this is going to be rough. <laughs> uh, well, we should call it there. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Until next week. Like and subscribe. <laughs> follow us. These should be posted by now, hopefully. They so. should be out there. You should be able to see this one. We're seven episodes deep, and we're finally posting some stuff. Let's go. Love it. Thanks, everybody. See you in the next one.